Can you feel like the, the ball's coming deeper, no? Seems like it as well. Hi, I'm Seb Proisey. And thanks to tennis majors in all their videos, you can find out all there is to know about tennis equipment. We'll tell you what the pros use to be at their best and what you should use to have the most fun and win the most matches. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at the Wilson Clash 98s. This racket costs just shy of 180 euros. And know that all the rackets in the Wilson Clash series gravitate around the same price point. Now, before diving deep into what this racket is all about, just know that there are quite a few different models in the Wilson Clash series. The Wilson Clash 100, the Wilson Class 100 Pro Tour, the Wilson Clash 98, which is what we'll be looking at, the Clash 100L, the Clash UL, and the Clash 108. As you can imagine, all these models differ in terms of weight, balance, head size, and I can only assume swing weight as well. And even though all the models in the Clash series share the same 16 by 19 string pattern, the actual spacing between the strings varies quite a lot, especially between the 98 and the 108 versions. The 98 has a smaller head size and the 108 has a bigger head size, hence the name. There's one thing that I do find interesting when looking at the differences in weights between all those models, and that's that they differ by increments of 15 grams. And if you remember what I said in our previous videos, most racket manufacturers have a margin for error of about seven grams, meaning the difference in weight between two rackets of the same model can go up to 14 grams. That's plus seven grams and minus seven grams. So that 15 gram increment, in my opinion, is actually pretty strategic. That means that no matter how light your Wilson Clash Tour Pro is, it should still be heavier than your heavy Wilson Clash 100. Once you start throwing swing weight into the mix, it gets quite confusing. My point is that a 15 gram increment is big enough to warrant making a new model in a series of rackets. As a side note, the Wilson Clash rackets are the only rackets I know that do not feature the racket specs printed on the racket. Coincidence? Anyways, back to the Clash 98. I liked it, and there are a few things that I really think are worth talking about. First is the racket handle. When you take the overgrip and the grip off, you notice that the handle is actually a part of the frame. In almost every single racket I've seen so far, the handle is actually molded in some kind of beige resin. That's of course aside from head rackets that actually use special head pallets to make their handles. Having the handle being a part of the frame makes it feel like the handle and the grip or even more part of the racket. And the graphite being more resistant than the resin, I can only assume there are less chances for the staples holding the butt cap to damage the handle. The ground strokes felt very good, and the overall weight made me feel like I wouldn't have to add too much extra weight to have it exactly like I want. However, I didn't feel like I was getting quite as much spin as I would expect from a frame with a 16 by 19 string pattern. This is probably due to the smaller head size, which forces the space between the strings to be a little bit smaller. And just by looking at the Wilson Clash 100, I can tell that it would offer a bit more spin because of the wider space between the strings. The two new technologies featured in the Clash series are called FreeFlex and Stable Smart. The FreeFlex is this supposedly revolutionary technology that adds even more bending to the frame, adding to the feeling of control over the ball and the stiffness rating actually stands quite low at about 55. It's actually quite surprising to be getting this much power from such a flexible frame. And this is where the stable smart technology comes into play. It seems to be compensating by adding stability to the frame and thus adding more power on each shot. The stable smart tech also comes with an interesting design choice in the form of a thin bar on the inside of the throat. To be honest, I'm not sure what this is there for. Overall, I enjoyed this racket, and I really think you should give it a try, especially if you're the kind of player who likes to hit hard and go for winners. Thank you for watching our videos. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Whoa! <laughs>